Okay, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Patch Rundown. Uh, this is going to be fun. We're going to go over every single change. Uh, maybe not the skill effects change the, the you know descriptions, but we're going to go through all the other changes, including AI as well. So, without further ado, let's dive into it. We've got here the first changes balances. Let's start with the balances, right? So the first balances are to the Magic Knights overall. The first skill has actually a, one of the biggest skill increases, the skill damage increases I've seen, which is very normal because the, the that first skill does no damage. So that will help with uh, that will help in a, in various cases. For starters, Lanette. We most of us have her. She was an H O H monster. Skilled, not skilled, doesn't matter because. Now at least she will do a lot more damage in Necro, hopefully. And uh, for the few that use her in raids, that's also an option now maybe, because her first skill is not like completely useless. Uh, but since we have so many new leader skills, that kind of... Eh. But it's definitely a Necro buff. Lots of Necro buffs, this in general. Now the second skill, Magic Surge, for the wa Fire, Wind and Light, uh, just got a damage increase. I guess some people use Fire Magic Knight, so that's good. The water one, the third one, uh, pretty much made her a, be a better farmer. She's still crap for Necro, but she's definitely a, a better and easier to make for new players since they get her for free farmer, right? So that's really good. The third skill is very good for you new players. Now, the Desert Queens, the newer, slightly newer uh, stuff. Now, all of their third skills got cooldown reduced. Now, see, the wind one it's amazing like for the wind one that is really good because she was a toa monster to begin with so that's the skill you really really liked anyway right so she sleeps now more and decreases the attack bar more that's really good for the wind as a queen for the water one though uh because that skill wasn't used in raids much and because of the new defense leaders, Bastard actually, I think, got dropped down. Bastard is the water desert queen. Got dropped down in the, in the raid, uh, you know, got dropped down in the in the raid meta. But she got up probably in the PvP one since it's a pretty good skill. It's just bad in raids. It's not bad, but it's not very good in raids. Uh, but yeah, that's for the water one. The light one, not many have her. She's not as good as the dark one, so. I guess we can skip her. <laughs> if you have one, feel free to talk to it in the comments and we can talk about the change if you want. Now, the next monster that got a lot of changes is the Anubis. All of them are pretty crap. Where? Pretty crappy. They, they were niche monsters. Uh, no monster in this game is truly, truly crappy. Like All of them have a niche they can feel, fill, especially depending on the rest of your monsters. Uh, so yeah. All of them got damage increases in their first skill, which is okay, normal. Uh, then the Water, Wind and Light got an increase in their second skill. And now every single one of them, and the Fire and the fire and Dark one got an increase in their in their second skill as well. The Fire and Dark one got a bigger buff because obviously they were, they were a bit weaker than the other one, than the other one, so that's good. Now all of the, all of, all of the Anubises, the the really bad ones, the fire and the dark, all of them, got changes in their third skill as well. For the fire one, it's a passive. Shield duration increased from one to two turns, and the damage absor absorption is increased. So he's more of a tank now. He's still weak to buff removal, he's still weak to oblivion, but he's more of a tank. So I don't, I don't like, off the top of my head, find some uses. You can still use him in Necro, maybe, because the, you know, the skill, his skills are multi-hit. And he's a pretty decent tank, but yeah, maybe Guild Wars. <laughs> he's still not very good. Like it's just a skill set. No matter how much it changes or buff it, uh, the Dark One is just straight up damage increase. He's a bit better now. He did lack damage uh, from what I've seen, so that's nice. Uh, the Fire Horus, arguably the worst Horus. If not, not even arguably, he's definitely the worst Horus. Uh, he got a very slight buff on his uh, third skill, I think. That's the third skill. Let me check. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Come on, load up. There we go. Horus, strategic. Yeah, that's the third skill. Uh, it's a single target, 
nuke, sort of, that also absorbs attack bar and stuns. Mm. And now it's more often used. Still not very good. Sorry. <laughs> um, now, let's move on to the mummies. The mummies got changed a bit. Just straight up huge damage increase on their first skill. Uh, and then the second skill of the water, fire, and dark one got a, also got a, an increase in damage. Uh, that's not too great. I mean, yeah, the mummies scale with max HP and they do dots, so the first skill being increased in damage so much might be decent. Uh, though the, the, the second one, the second change, the the smother change on the, fire, on the water, fire and dark mummy, not so cool anyway. It's not a very cool spell, so just the damage increase. They're still pretty usable in Necro, actually. They're pretty decent, so maybe you can go there. But eh, I'm not very happy with the mummies. Oh well. The water one might even be usable in dragons, now that I think of it. I don't know. Maybe in slower comps, but then you would take it out of the way after a point, so not, not much point. And the light one is just the soul division is the res it has. Uh, the light one already was sort of viable, so... Okay, thank you. Come to us. Now they just made it more. Uh, it's it was sort of viable for dragons. Like it wasn't a Brienne or anything, or uh, like Brienne actually still was better, but it wasn't too bad. Like it's one ally. Brienne is still better because of the attack debuff and stuff. But the 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 light mummy, if you have it, it's definitely a viable reser for PVE. Uh, it, I think it's pretty good in dragons. It's not as good as in TOA, but it's pretty good in dragons as well, because you know the third, what the third skill does is it, it res an ally and then it evens out the HP between the two of you. So if you have a hundred percent, you're both at fifty percent. So that's why I'm saying it's not as good as Brienne. Plus, it doesn't have the debuff that Brienne has, but it's still a viable thing. If you're having trouble with Brienne because he's wind, for example, in dragons, the light mummy might help you. But and now it has a short cooldown, so I guess that's something, right? <laughs> now, uh, one of my favorite buffs of uh, the, the patch, the Cowgirl. Water, Fire, Wind, Light, and Dark. The first skill, Crossfire. It's now a more viable attack speed reducing effect. Now, I have uh, Sarah, the Water Cowgirl, 6 starred. So, the, the first skill has, let me see... Let me see, it has two skill ups in harmful effect rate. That's that takes it out to forty percent. With a buff, now it's fifty percent. It's a pretty viable attack speed reduction skill. You'll have to max skiller, which is hard because of all the guild wars points. But still, considering what we're gonna talk about afterwards about the second skill of the cowgirls, it, the the cowgirls have become really good, especially the water one. The water one is like necro, amazing in necro now. A lot of monsters are, but if you already have one, I'm probably still not gonna use her because of the other stuff I have. But she's amazing. Uh, okay, so that's for the cowgirls. Now how? Okay, it's the the wind uh, Lulu, the, the wind uh, whatever the name of that monster is. Attack heal, damage increase, that's not much. Like that's that, I think that's more of a TOA buff than a player buff. Because <laughs> what? Mystic Witch Fire, yeah, that's that's not a big buff. It's not even a TOA buff. For those of you thinking about the TOA floor with the the guys that punch the fire guys and the and the the fire mystic witches, the Rebecca, whatever her name is, that's not that much of a TOA buff. They were already healing to full from all the debuffs, so the minimum recovery amount that changed isn't much to up the difficulty of that floor, so don't worry about that, TOA wise. So yeah, that's like not much. Uh, salamanders, salamanders. Oh, we haven't had music this whole time. Well, let's put it on now. <laughs> it's okay, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I don't want to go back and edit anything. So enjoy the music from now on. Uh, so yeah, Salamanders, lots of changes, pretty much the same for all of them, like all their skills, they're proking from defense as well. What that does is it makes the Salamanders pretty good for raids, because they do some damage as well. The light one is what most people think, but the light one can get Oblivion too much, so the passive is not 
Like I, the same goes for Waterlich, and I've said he's amazing. So the light one is prime example. Probably he's she's probably even better now because he does more damage. Um, with his uh, first and second skills, the fire one is also pretty good. Reduced attack bar on the second and uh, uh, attack uh, attack debuff on the first skill. So no, or is it the third skill of the fire one? Anyway, overall. It's a pretty good change for the Salamanders. I think they're a bit more raid viable now for the newer players. Maybe the, 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 you won't see many Salamanders in R5, but I think this definitely makes them viable for up to R4. Uh, definitely, like, no joke. Especially the light one. Let me check the far one for one second. See what the... Yeah, the far one's third skill got buffed as well. So, yeah, all of them interesting pretty interesting skills i think the fire one is actually super viable for net for uh, raids right now with that change with like uh speed defense defense maybe and some damage like it actually does some damage now it already ha was good debuff wise but now it can you maybe you can do defense good damage defense. you know for a debuff first last yes sir if you need one okay so that's for the salamanders Let's go to the Yetis. Uh, the Yetis, uh, they're not very used all around. They just, like, the Fire and the Dark one just got a boost, the damage boost, which is kind of crappy because in TOA, the, the Yeti floors were hard enough already. And the other one's got a boost in their second skill, the Heavy Slash. Now it does da defense damage on top of the attack power. Uh, some people have used them in raids. They're not that great. Like, their stats are very low and, yeah. It's a nice change, but it won't probably amount to much. It's nice for the newer players, like it will help boost their damage a little bit. You know, because we've all used like the Wind Yeti for example. That's nice. Some of us have used the Fire One. You know, in general it's it's interesting. It's interesting in general, the buff, but it's not much to look at. Now the Harpoos. Two Harpoos are very viable. The, the Fire and the Dark One, especially the Fire One, like Colleen is right up there it's like the, the one of the best monsters in a month like she got all those buffs slowly but surely I, I don't think there's been a patch where colleen hasn't been buffed in the last like a y year <laughs> it's amazing i'll have to check that but <laughs> it's ridiculous she gets buffed every patch it's like come to us as favorite monster anyway uh in this patch all, all, all she got was a damage increase in the first and second skill but that's good for Necro, like, it might help you kill it faster, so, you know, why not? Uh, all of them actually got a boost in the Deadly Dart and Blackout Kick. Uh, now, the interesting buff is the Dark One. The Dark One was already pretty decent for Necro, if not better than Colleen, actually. If you were, if you were single healing it, or you could go with both. Uh, it, the defense, the, the chance to decrease defense increased, so it's much more... Um, Reliable now, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, reliable defense break means that you can bring something else instead of uh, her, for example. Let me check how much the activation rate is. I think, I, nah, fuck it. Anyway, it's still good. It's still good. It's an interesting buff. Now, that was a, the, the next one is like Phoenix Surprise Sigmar's buff. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, might help people who use him in arena it's on this third skill so yeah why not i suppose <laughs> now the assassins they were already like on the verge of being really really good in pvp now they are pretty good with their damage increases let's see that the, the first skill got the uh, buffed defense uh break wise very good always helps to have a, a dps that can also break defense <coughs> feel <coughs> Uh, as, uh, also the water, fire, and light one got uh, got their uh, second skill increased. Actually, those are my le like the fire. I don't like at all. The light one is pretty good, especially since you got a huge buff in the third skill as well, which you'll see here. Recovery amount increased from 25 to 50. So the light one is a, like a bruiser now, pretty much. I like the light one. I don't like the fire one at all. The water one, since they changed the, her third one. Uh, because now it's easier to get to the, to the maximum attack, the 7 attacks, I think that's it. Uh, the water one got better, 
she's now I think she's now viable in Guild Wars, like much better. It's easier to rune. But her damage was increased overall, so yeah, that's nice. And then the final change, Ragdoll. <sighs> to start with, including the other change that happened that we're gonna talk about later, Ragdoll is now no longer uh, beatable just by Verd. No, no longer. It's not just Verd. Like it, before, you brought a Verd, you got a 40% increase while they got a 20% increase, so you won overall in the attack ADB trade. Now that is no longer the case, and that TOA floor, it will get a lot harder, I think. The, the, both the Ragdoll, the Ragdoll Inferno stage and the, Ragdoll, the Ragdoll's Leo stage in 93, it still will be easy in normal, but in hard, or even normal for the newer players, obviously. So, yeah. Ragdoll buff. I think it's more of an, a TOA buff. Like, not many people have Ragdoll. And even with this buff, he's not that uh, viable still. So, yeah. Th that's for the buffs. Or oh, the, the balances. Now, let's go to the changes. We have quite a few changes, actually. Uh, all of them are, I feel, are sort of either overdue, or just, uh, you know, they are putting more mechanics in the game, more ways of doing, you know, the, the things that we already have, like, so they're pretty much introducing more monsters to the game. The Wind Vagabond, I think he, this is the most buffed monster in this patch, and he's a, like, a crazy Theo counter right now. <laughs> no joke, 6-star Wind Vagabond, like, might be my next 6-star. <laughs> Uh, increasing the critical rate by 30%, this skill will now provoke for one turn with a 100% chance. And that's his third skill. Slash wind. Now that does, that, that does it. Like, that makes the wind vagabond, like, so, so good. I, I like him a lot now. Um, so, slash wind, what it did, it, it was a pretty high uh, damaging attack. But I think it was based on, uh... I think it was based on HP, let me check... Yeah, it's proportional to max HP. So what they did, they made him an HP monster now. So he has a lot of HP. So HP crit damage, uh, uh, HP crit damage, HP roid. His name is a bit unfortunate though. Roid, really? Anyway, HP crit damage, HP roid might be like the number one thing on Mars counter right now. You just remove whatever, if he has will, you just remove that, and then you just hit him with a third skill. Even if it doesn't kill him, it will provoke him. It's easy to crit because A, he's a water monster. B, it's a, it has a 30% increase, an increased crit rate. So pretty much you need 55%. So you need 40% crit rate from runes and subs to crit on a Theo Mars with Roid. 40% from runes and subs. If you have a blade set, you need 28%. So really easy to rune. To, to make him into a Theomars counter, not overall. Overall, you need as much as you can, probably 70%. His other skills are still the same. He has a defense break, he has an attack break. Uh, his defense break still scales off HP, so now it does a lot of damage, and HP crit damage attack. You can crit like 12, 13k on that thing. My Darien, when I was like fully ruined with HP, 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 without crit damage, he was critting for 10k, so I, I, shud I shudder to think what Roid can do. <laughs> With HP crit damage HP, so yeah, I think that this 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 change, I love it. I honestly love it. I think it's an amazing monster. It will help a lot of people, and I like that they're buffing another monster instead of like nerfing Theo, which a lot of people ask for. I don't think Theo needs to be nerfed. I think we just need more answers to him. This is one. Uh, this is another answer. Uh, okay, so. Anubis, Water, Soul Destroyer, additional effect, killing an enemy will grant you soul protection for two turns. So if you kill someone, you cannot die for two turns, unless you that buff gets removed. So that's not bad. He, it kind of plays more into his uh, DPS, bursty DPS thing. He can be a sort of Theo, <laughs> because you know, he can, you, you, he can die and then you don't have to worry about him. You can even let him die. And, and let him tag a couple of hits. I think this increases his viability uh, in uh, viability, yeah, in uh, Guild Wars for sure. 
Um, that's about it. Like, it's it's a nice change. It's definitely a, a good buff. Now the cowgirl, the water, the the defeat wild hog thing. That is another amazing cowgirl necro buff. Like the water cowgirl now, she has very good uh, like 50. If you skill her up, 50% attack speed decrease on first skill, and it has three hits. Like the first skill three hits three times. Each one has 50%. So it's very very likely that she's going to decrease attack speed. So you don't need Hua. It's nice if you have Hua, but you don't actually need her now. Uh, defeat Wild Hog. Critical hits will increase the attack bar by 10%. My Sarah was 86% crit, I think. And you can even go with 100% if you, you can put a crit rate rune on her. Like attack, crit rate, attack for Necro. Still be, will be great. And uh, Defeat Wild Hog hits two times. That's a 20% attack bar increase every time she uses it. And it's AoE, it's like Necro, Sarah, love, love, you know, love forever, it's so good. Uh, the Wind Cowgirl buff, the Whirlwind shot, eh, I don't like the Wind Cowgirl, honestly, that's okay, that's a, like, you know, it's a nice change, but, uh, yeah, it's just, it's sort of a, you will get no attack bar thing, but it's still single target, there are better monsters for it, nah. Don't really care. Uh, the Nighttail Fox, the dark one, was pretty much completely useless, but now she's still kind of niche. It's not like this made her instantly super viable. She's still good in Guild Wars now if you need to lock something down. She's another Theo counter, so, you know, if you crit and boom, dead. So, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> oh, boom, boom, stunned, and, and I assume dead, but you, can, you know, things can still violent out of stuns. But a guaranteed stun is always nice, right? And her skill set overall is not that bad. Like the, the Fire Nine Tails. Uh, let me find her. She is right here. Yeah, she sleeps and then, you know. Uh, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice interaction because her third skill has 100% crit rate on, sle on sleeping targets. So you could, you know, pair it with an Arya maybe. Or a Wind Desert Queen if you have one. You know, it's a, it's a guaranteed stun, it's nice. Always nice. Uh, now... And it does damage, like, the third skill is not, like... You know, it, it's a pretty decent modifier. I don't remember how much it is, but it's pretty decent. So you can even use her in Necro, maybe. I wouldn't recommend it, really, but... You know, because of the AI change that we'll talk about later, maybe. So, Fire Sea Emperor, that's a big buff. Okeanos was already pretty good like uh, contrary to people thinking he was bad he was actually really good like he's a very good monster in guild wars very good monster and even a bit viable against specific defenses in AO like Tiana he dumps on Tiana he still dumps on Tiana but now he dumps on other things as well because his third skill pretty much stuns everyone all the time like it's so many hits so many chances to stun he will stun some things so if you stun four things in arena, this, congratulations, you got 100% attack bar. That's, it might be, it's not a violent, so it's not an immediate next turn, but it's pretty close. It's like Konamiya, like Konamiya gives you 100% attack bar. If you already have, if you violent, if you violent him, like you can do like two, three turns, and he procs, you can do two, three turns, like just like that, with this effect. That's, it's pretty nice. Uh, it doesn't, it, he was already viable, so I won't say it makes him viable, but it makes him more, you know, more than what he was. I think it's a really good change, and a really interesting mechanic, and we need more of those in this game. Um, now, uh, Dragon Knight, water, two changes. I think the first change, just getting justice, I think that's very boring. Leg zero. Uh, so, water dragon knight. Yeah, I think the th the, the justice change is sorry about this. It was a bit lazy. Like you just gave him justice. I mean, yeah, it's good. Thank you, but no. <laughs> I liked him with Thorin too. Like the problem wasn't that he didn't have justice. I think it's a bit lazy. Uh, it's definitely good. It makes him more of a nuker now. But 
you know, I, I am happy with it. I'm definitely happy with it. I just think it was lazy. Uh, the second change I like more, uh, they added something to his passive, which really needed something to be added. Uh, I think what it do what they did is they pretty much took Torrent's second uh, effect. You know, the the execute uh, Torrent has the, uh, not many people know this, but Torrent has the, had this as well. The less HP you have, the more damage you do. It it just scaled horribly. So I guess they just took this and put it into his passive, which is nice. Uh, but you know, uh, I hope it's a good a, a good multiplier because before look, to the Torrent multiplier was horrible like you were at 90% at 100% you would do like let's say 10k at 90% you would do 10.1 like yeah that, that's not scaling <laughs> that's a lie <laughs> so yeah uh, we'll wait and see I'll probably this is how to child part 4 <laughs> right here thank you come to us but yeah um, I like I like that they at least noticed him uh, it's probably even better for Dragon now. <laughs> anyway. And now let's go to the Undines. Uh, the Undines... They were decent, especially the, the Water one. Because she was very good. She was a decent reser. She got buffed before with a Soul Protection buff on her res. Now her second skill got a buff as well. Uh, it uh, puts uh, Glancing on the target. Which is really nice for dragons because it helps with those if you're using a res comp i think my king is probably better than brian now but actually no scratch out she's definitely better than brian now she can cc she can glance she can uh uh res with a res that actually doesn't let you get one shot right back but yeah my king is totally viable for res comps now i don't think she's but maybe viable anywhere else still so yeah i don't know i have a my king I never used her, like, literally, unfortunately, because I had Brian. but yeah. Fire one, uh, Adonai, she's nice, uh, she's always been, like, on the verge of being good, her balance is not bad, her first skill puts dots up, you know, for PvE content, she's not very good, bad, like, she's decent, especially for TOA, maybe, for as a healer, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a hard, uh, it's a hard call to make. Like six starting a nat and I, that's a fire on I, I still don't like her. Uh, I think she has her uses, and she's definitely very good for new players that don't have Chasun or, you know, their only healer is Bella. But my only healer was Bella for the longest time, and I still never did a nat and I, and I was fine. So yeah, I don't know about her. Uh, she's still good. Like, if you have one, good for you. She, I'm, I'm sure you find uses for her. But you know, this buff definitely helps. Unrecoverable is not that useful in PVE, but you know, whatever helps. She's good in the wind dungeon now. <laughs> uh, now the dark one, just yeah, fifty percent chance to decrease the attack bar. The dark one I like more now because she, she has a lot of. Uh, uh, a good uh, synergy with Ramagos now. <laughs> she res him, she reses him with a full attack bar and one HP. She decreases the attack bar overall. Like I like the dark one. I like the dark one a lot now. She's very fun. I'm sure. Uh, I think this change makes her a bit more PVP viable. Uh, but yeah, that's about it again. Like, if you synergize, like it's a soon Ramagos dark uh, Undyne team. Might actually go with a decently speed tuned just soon, you know, so that the Dark Undyne goes. And if you need to heal the Ramagos up or the DPS, or it doesn't have to be Ramagos, you know, heal him up right after he dies uh, to full with just soon. So yeah, I think it's a it's a decently viable monster now. It's rare, it's dark, but yeah. The Taoist now they got. Uh, some very decent buffs like the first attack instead of increasing crit rate now it decreases attack power very good uh, if the attack lands at a critical hit this attack will intentionally increase the target chances of landing glancing hits so it's th th those are one turn debuffs so they're not like back breaking but you know it's a nice buff uh, it's really really nice for the for the wind towers like he was already a TOA god 
But now he puts attack debuff off on top of it and glancing a few crits, like wow. I don't even count Huadam because eh, Huadam he's kind of out of the meta now. He's but it it is a buff to Huadam as well, obviously. Uh, I don't like the other towers, so but yeah, it's uh, it's really nice. Now, the second uh, at skill of the Water and Dark one. Additional effect. Stuns the target for one turn if the target's already under attack speed decreasing effect. Okay. So they basically gave them Lich's cooldowns, but, you know, not as good because... Yeah, you know, this is actually a pretty decent... Like, if you have the Dark Towers, this is actually a pretty decent uh, uh, combination with Spectra. You know, attack speed debuff, then boom, <laughs> stun everyone. Uh, so that's nice. That is definitely nice. I can see a lot of combos that would work with this. I don't like it for the water one because the water one is a DPSer. So I don't even like the skill on the water being on the water one. But on the dark one, uh, I have no issue with it. I actually like the change. Now the fire's third skill, the flame of ascension. Each attack has a thirty percent chance to increase the target's cooldown time by one turn. I don't like the increase cooldown by one turn thing anyway. It's either all or nothing, so... Yeah, and he's fire. Like, if he was wind, I'd say he's pretty good for Theo, but... Nah. <laughs> nah. I still don't like it. Uh, it's... You know, all changes are good, but some of them are just straight up TOA buffs and not player buffs, so I don't like this one too much. <laughs> but if he... Like, he tar if he targets Brienne then TOA and he increases... Dress cooldown, I would not be happy. Um, Howl's changes. Again, I think those are more TOA buffs. Uh, Lulu and uh, the fire one. The skill will now remove two harmful effects. I still have nightmares about the Lulu succubus phase in TOA and all the red ones. Like, ah, fuck this change. I don't like this. The dispel attack by the fire howl. Decent too. You know, Lulu would be decent if she was more than just a healer. She's like 100% heal. She does, like, and cleanser now. She does nothing else. She she even gains more attack bar through her first skill to uh, heal more. So, <laughs> she's still very good for new players. I use Lulu. My, I, have a, I had a 5-star Lulu for the longest time. Uh, she's a very, very good healer early on, so I implore all of you do uh, do 5 star 1, never 6 stars, it's not really worth it, but uh, she's very good. Together with Bella, they can be your main healers for the longest time. Uh, Light Undyne, her uh, hurt skill got changed. Well, pretty much what it does now is it just cleanses as well, which is the new Vogue, I guess, but I still don't like it. It's just so prone to buff removal that it's... Uh, okay, so you gave me three turns, whatever. She might be interesting in uh, Guild Wars, though, I guess. So she, she cleanses as well. She can, like, remove... You can... Ha it, anything can happen to you. You know, get stunned, get fucked, whatever. And then she will just, you know, cleanse and uh, give you invincibility. So, I guess that's nice. <laughs> she also has the cooldown thing. So, her in a combination with a DPSer, maybe even a Theo... Uh, might actually be good Theo counter. You know, she resets, then if she gets a Violent Pro or next turn, she uh, gives your Theo, you know, safety and might be decent, I guess. She's still, she, she's also pretty good, like, in general, but I guess that helps a bit in her viability. And the Fire Sylphid. I don't get why they did that. I don't get why they changed this. Like, she was already viable in TOA. She was fine in TOA. I, I have a 5-star Fire Soul Freya that I'm going to 6-star at some point with the Despair set. She's good. Like, I, I think she's really good. Like, she can uh, increase decrease everyone's attack bars while increasing yours. She can stun if you Despair her. She can increase you a lot with Violent. Like... She was fine, and her passive and her passive was fine. What they did here is a TOA buff through and through. Like, they pretty much all they did with this is they buffed uh, the uh, the Fire Ninja quadruple Sylphid stage, which you could kill with dots so that it wouldn't take you a million years. 
that's all they did. Now it procs anyway, so all of them will heal, so it will take a million years. So yeah, good luck with that. Fuck that. Fuck this buff. This buff, it didn't actually make that stage harder, because you can still CC the crap out of them, you know, and just you know kill them one by one, but man, is it, is it annoying. This stage just got like four times longer. Unless you have Zyros, so if you have Zyros, or you never knew, if you had Zyros, you never knew what this skill did anyway, so. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> now, the stats of Sam Monsters, we talked about this, he's an, uh, Roid is a HP monster now, perfect. New leader skills. Now, careful. This is so that it can help people who didn't already have. Thessarian is still... The resistance leader. Do not change out your Tessarians for anything else. Unless people start putting like 70% resistance on their monsters. Like if you have an agreed upon team where, okay, guy, and you say, like, okay, guys, can I bring Hua and uh, give resistance lead with my DS, for example, instead of Tessarian? Are you guys okay with that? Are you gonna get to 100% resist anyway? If they say yes, good, do it. Tessarian is still. Like, I'm not talking about Praha, it's not like, duh. But the Siren stuff is still like premier resistance lead. Like free 41% resistance lead. Because a lot of people, the reason I say this is because a lot of people have their stuff at like 59 to 65 to uh, percent resistance. You know, they're tuned to that Tessarian or Praha resistance lead. So don't fuck them up. We want that 100% resistance. There are so many hits on the raid, from the raid. You might say, oh, resistance, not so good. No, you get hit like 20 times from the raid. Each hit has a chance to apply debuff. The fact that like, you sometimes get like one debuff is a miracle. That's why you need resistance, okay? Uh, so yeah, I prefaced with that. Let's go into the leader skills. Death Knights, all of them go. Uh, the the raid relevant ones, well, which is pretty much everyone but the light one, got uh, raid buffs like defense, defense, defense for uh, for Fedora and Arnold, and uh, resistance for DS and Brienne. It's good, it's good, especially the defense lead, which is one of the harder leads because there was only Orion who was viable in raids and had a de defense lead. So now we have two more. I still don't like Fedora. I don't like the fact that he gives the Endure buff. It's one buff too much. You know, I, I just don't like it. Like, I think he's good if you don't have anything, any cleanser. I think he's probably better than Delphoi now. Nah, he's not better than Delphoi. Actually, he might be better than Delphoi. I don't like the fact that he gives two buffs for some reason in my head. Even though everyone has like shitloads of unrecoverable now. I don't like that. But he's even more viable now, he gives you defense. The defense lead is 25%, the, the other one is uh, 33, so it's even uh, it's a 8% difference, it's really small, whereas with resistance it's 11, so it's way more. But 8%, not so much of a difference, very good. The resistance lead also very good, it opens up options uh, to use you know other, crit rate, or other leads uh, or other monsters. But as I said, be careful with the resistance lead. Uh, the light one gives attack speed. I really like that because now he's like even more viable in Guild Wars. Uh, I'm gonna make a video of him soon. Uh, I'll have to max his runes or he'll be sucky. But he, I've given him some runes and he does mad damage. Like I, I'm very happy with this change. Makes him even more viable, even in arena maybe. So yeah, good for Conrad, right? Good. For, I hope all of you found one. And yeah, this is a really, really nice change. I like it a lot. You can even use him in some dungeons, like maybe dragons or giants as a nuker, and then you know, if anything dies, oop. well, not on the boss stage, but you know, in the in the trash stage, anything dies. Is uh, let's go. We'll bring it back. Eh, I don't know. I uh, it's that's still a thought in progress, but you know, you could use him. Rakshasas all got leader skills as well. Now, granted, the mostly the most used Rakshasha is the far one. She got a crit rate lead. That's awesome for Necro because like 90% te of teams in uh, Necro have Hua in it, 
and uh, she just got a very viable lead if you don't have anything else. Uh, for I'm using Shihua lead. I am going to try the Hua, but, but I have like 100% crit rate or 89 in Hua's case in all my monsters, and I'm using Adrian. So, it's not that much of a necro buff, especially if you're using Adrian, but if you're missing a... if you There are instances where you simply don't have leader skills that are good enough, especially if you don't have Sihua. But you can then get a Lukasha, for example, or if you're using like Dark Harpy, but you don't have Sihua, and you're using Adrian and Hua, then yeah, put Hua as your leader. And, you know, that's the case where you can use it. Uh, the Wind, Rakshasha, which is also a Necro monster. Attack power, that's definitely very good for Necro. Like, that's, if you're using Wind Rakshasha, put her as a leader. Uh, same for the Dark one, she's also a Necro monster. Also, you can do the same. And the Water one, she can be used in Dragons, but she's mostly a Farm and Farmer. You can do it even easier now with the Attack power buff. Good for her, okay? Now the water cow girls... Uh, the water one, also attack power increase, so another buff for Necro for her. So if you... Uh, if I uh, if I was still using Sarah, I would put that... I would put her as leader, because she Hua doesn't increase her attack power. So yeah, amazing buff as well, another... like. Sarah can like, solo carry Necro right now. I implore every single one of you who are building a Necro team, make one. She's ama if you don't have Shihua. Like, if you, if you don't go for the full fire team, Sarah is... Oh, wow. So good. So good. And if you don't have Hua, she's also a replacement, but you'll have to skill her up. Uh, the other leader skills... Eh, who uses the other <laughs> occult girls? Uh, I guess the dark one could be used, and it's universal one. I'm not very happy with that. I'm not as happy as I would be because, you know, not many people use them. But the water one, excellent. And AI. Uh, I think this is pretty much where we stop. Because, yeah. Like, the the skill descriptions, I don't really care. It's just, you know, it's usually they just do better translations of monsters, of uh, descriptions uh, from the Korean version. And bugs... Yeah, I have never encountered. I have both Tiana and Wind Death Knight, uh, and I have never encountered those uh, bugs. So I don't think they're that, you know, good for them that they're changing it. But there's not much to uh, talk about. Then the skill descriptions, nothing. So let's talk about the AI and wrap this up. Beast Monk, defend the water and the dark one. So they won't use it when they're low. So what? Chandra was borderline viable, so I guess that makes him a bit better in AD, in GD. Yeah, good luck with that. But, yeah. So what? <laughs> I guess they'll just do more damage instead of using defend on cooldown now, if they have a low HP. And like hope to get healed. Which is not bad. Like, or not kill themselves by defending something. But if they, if they have low HP, they're obviously getting focused, so... Like, that, that's my issue with Defend to begin with. Anyway. Uh, Nine-Tailed Fox. The Necro buff of the patch! No more sleep on the friggin' bosses. That is so cool. Like, the Dark Lich and the boss, the final boss, will no longer, like, be... Like, this is so good, because she was one uh, bad part was this, because... Yeah, you could. I use mine as a shield breaker, but with triple revenge. But still, like, if she uses enchant, then your other monsters have to pick up the shield breaking slack. And the so this is like amazing for speed for uh, upping the speed of your necro runs. Amazing. This is like the amazing and a very very good buff. The dark self. Yeah, it won't use it. Yeah, who uses dark self? But Water Mermaid. Same. Water Wind Dark Frankenstein. That is actually good. That is actually quite good because it's good for raids, I guess. If you're using either of the, all of them, uh, any of them uh, uh, in raids, if they're immune to taunt, you know they're just used their first skills. Same for the for Necro, like the the Wind one. I think the Wind one is used in Necro. Uh, so yeah, it's it's the, the Frankenstein buff makes them a bit more viable. It's not too bad, especially the water. Though I like the water one. 
Um, the Dark Mermaid. The AI will now, ad now attempt to heal according to the ally's HP situation. I'm not sure that's a good thing. <laughs> I think that's a nerf. Uh, so, they changed Serenity already. I don't know. Wait, actually, scratch that. Like, completely disregard what I just said. Serenity? Yeah, it's the third one. Yeah. So... Uh, this might be a bit like Chasun, because Chasun was doing it at the start, and then they did this exact AI change to her, and she still does it at the beginning. So... I think this buff or improved AI is a bit obscure. We don't know yet. Uh, hopefully, she's still very viable. I, I, don't, I don't want them to ruin better. Uh, so I hope she's still just fine. Like her AI is improved, if nothing else. So that's, I guess, good, maybe? <laughs> better? Uh, yay. Uh, now, the Light Oracle. For those of you who have her, for starters, grats. And fuck you. <laughs> but... Uh, the AI will now use the skill more often, based on how many harmful effects are on the allies. So she's just a better cleanser now. Uh, this doesn't really change the TOA floor, because you focused her and like changed the Cedar anyway, so... Who cares about her AI if you're gonna just kill her? But... I guess now she will use it, like she won't start with it, so... Anything that makes her use her second skill more is fine by me. I think this is a sort of PvP, if it like does exactly what they say, and if she goes first, she has a higher chance of using her second skill now because she won't use her third. I actually think that's a PvP buff. So those of you who have her on AED, it would be nice if, like in a week after the patch has been implemented, come here and tell me, is it any better? <laughs> uh, that's about it. Like, that's the patch. This is the first episode, episode of the patch rundown. I hope you uh, liked and were helped by this rundown and uh, any questions you might have or feedback, feel free to you know, drop them uh, at the end of the video. I know I didn't make an edited video, you know, with stuff like that, but that's sort of like I don't have time to edit videos. I work, <laughs> yeah. so I just do them, you know, on the fly. I think it's more natural that way. It helps me be more, uh, you know, spontaneous. So, yeah, I know it would be more impressive if, you know, I had graphics and showed every monster and stuff, but you can do that on your own. Just have me on the background helping you out. Uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.